Overhead crane training. Objectives. Understand the following. The safe operation of overhead cranes to include bridge, gantry, jib, and monorail cranes. Basic safety and incident prevention. Basic procedures. And operator evaluation. The agenda. What we're going to cover in this video are the following. Crane basics such as types of cranes, the parts of the crane, inspecting the crane, and maintaining the crane. We will discuss crane safety, which will include basic crane safety, crane safety tools, and warning markers and hand signals. And we will also cover safe crane operational procedures, which will include loads and lifts, testing, operational qualifications, and conduct of operators. Types of cranes, the gantry crane. This type of crane that is built upon a bridge-like overhead structure, which is called a gantry. The photo on the left is a gantry crane. The photo in the middle is the portable gantry, also sometimes called an A-frame. And the photo to the far right is a semi-gantry crane. A bridge crane, that is an overhead crane that consists of parallel runways with a traveling bridge. A monorail crane, this is a type of overhead crane that travels suspended on a single rail. The jib crane, this type of crane includes a horizontal beam that extends out to lift and move a load along the beam. There are typically two types, the wall-mounted jib crane, which is the photo on the left, and the floor-mounted or pedestal crane, uh, which is the photo on the right. Crane operation roles. There are two main roles when it comes to crane operation. The hoist or crane operator, as the person who uses the hoist to lift, lower, and move the load by means of a crane. And I should note that the operator is responsible for the safe lifting, movement, and operation of the crane and the load. The rigger is the person who is responsible for balancing and securing the load to the hook and typically will direct the hoist operator during the lift. Parts of the crane, specifically the hoisting mechanism. There are four main parts to the hoisting mechanism. The hook, the hoist block, the wire rope, and the hoist drum. The overhead parts of the crane include the end trucks, the trolley, the bumpers, the bridge, the runway beam, and the pendant. Other parts of the crane are there for safety. The power supply or disconnect. It is necessary to know where that is located in case of an emergency and power needs to be disconnected from the crane. Also, the operator needs to understand the load rating of the crane involved in the lift. And finally, where the nearest fire extinguisher is in case of an emergency. Inspections. Inspections are one of the tools that are used to help prevent machine breakdowns and accidents. With cranes, there are two types of inspections, frequent inspections and periodic inspections. Should note that the operator is responsible to perform a pre-use inspection, which is a shortened version of the frequent inspection. The photo at the right is Triasim's crane operator's pre-shift inspection checklist. Frequent inspections. Frequent inspections are inspections that are conducted by an operator or other designated personnel on a daily to monthly basis. All deficiencies shall be carefully examined and determination made as to whether they constitute a safety hazard. Areas to look at. All functions, operating mechanisms for mile adjustments, 
interfering with proper operation, deterioration or leakage in lines, tanks, valves, drain pumps, and other parts of air or hydraulic systems, hooks with deformation or cracks, hoist or load attachment chains, including end connections, rope slings, including end connections for excessive wear, broken wires, stretching, kinking, or twisting, all functional operating mechanisms for excessive wear of components, rope reaving for non-compliance with the manufacturer's recommendation. Periodic inspections. Periodic inspections or visual inspections of the crane in intervals of one to 12 months, depending upon its activity, severity of service and environment. This must be done by a designated person who makes records of apparent external conditions to provide the basis for a continuing evaluation. Periodic inspections shall include the requirements of a frequent inspection along with the items listed below. Deformed, cracked, or corroded members, loose or missing bolts, nuts, pins, or rivets, cracked or worn sheaves and drums, worn, cracked, or distorted parts, excessive wear of brake system parts, electric or other power plants for proper operation, excessive wear of drive chain sprockets and excessive drive chain stretch, crane hooks, electrical apparatus for signs of pitting or any deterioration of controller contactors, limit switches, and push button stations. Note, periodic inspections are the responsibility of the mill and are typically performed at least annually. Wire rope inspections. Types of wire rope abnormalities covered in this section are waviness, basket, lantern deformation or bird caging, cord protrusion or distortion, strand protrusion or distortion, wire protrusion, local increase in diameter of rope, flattened portion, and kinks. You can notice that each photo displays each one of those types of abnormalities. Crane maintenance. Maintenance of cranes is typically the responsibility of the mill. Preventive maintenance includes fluid replacement, frequently worked parts, pads, hoses, controls, wire rope, warning devices, and signs. If deficiencies or evidence of poor maintenance is identified during the pre-use inspection, notify your supervisor and or the mill contact immediately. Basic crane safety. Cranes should be operated only by regular operators, authorized substitutes, crane repairmen, and inspectors. Do not carry a load over people on the floor. Sound warning devices to alert persons nearby. Do not allow anyone to ride on the load carried by the crane or on the crane hook. Never try to stop the load with your hands or body. Inspect equipment daily before use. Always keep an eye out for changes in the equipment and the safety in the area. Never pull a hoist by the pendant cable. Never leave the controls unattended while load is suspended. Lower the load to the floor if it is necessary to leave the controls. Please be sure to unhook the load from the crane. Before moving the trolley or bridge, be sure that the hook is high enough to clear all obstacles. Do not drag slings, chains, or lifting devices out from under loads that have been landed. If you are asked to do something that you do not feel comfortable or safe about, contact your supervisor for advice. Basic crane safety. A crane and or equipment that is shut down for various reasons should be locked out and tagged out. Do not operate or use any equipment that is locked and tagged out. Speak with a supervisor and or the mill contact regarding the operations of any equipment. Warning devices. A warning device is any device that alerts people in the area of a crane that it is in operation. Examples are manually operated warning devices, 
powered operated bell, siren, or horn, rotating beacon, strobe lights. Verify that the warning devices are working correctly during the pre-use inspection. Other warning devices. Warning signs and markings should be present in all workplaces while operating a crane to communicate dangers and hazards with the crane. These will vary based on the mill requirements. When operating a crane, it is important to warn others in the area that the crane is being operated. In many cases, the area will need to be barricaded with red barricade tape and signs. Ensure that you follow the mill requirements regarding barricading. Crane signals. It is preferable that crane movement be communicated verbally to others involved in the lift. However, in some cases, using crane hand signals may be required to safely operate the crane. For example, in a high noise area where verbal communication is difficult. It is vital that the crane operator and the person providing signals understand what each signal means. Failure to properly communicate crane movement could result in property damage and or severe injury. Also, it is important that only one person provide the signals to the operator. Multiple persons providing signals could cause the operator to become confused. The photo at the right shows the basic overhead crane and signals. Please review these prior to making lifts. Let's pause for a moment and discuss some safety violations that could occur during overhead crane operations. This photo has several. First, the load weighs approximately 5,000 pounds, which exceeds the rating for this crane, which is 3,000 pounds. The hook latch is not close. The hook appears to be opening up. In other words, it's been stretched. The load is being lifted over people. One person does not have the proper PPE on, in this case, a hard hat. The operator is distracted and not paying attention to the suspended load. The operator is working from the bed of the truck and not the ground. The operator appears to be pulling the crane by the pendant cable. There is also a tear in the sling. There is also a knot in the sling. The load is not properly secured and could potentially fall out of the sling. And finally, there are people under the load not paying attention. Load markings must be posted on the crane and on the hoist block. Knowing the load weight is important to preventing accidents with the lift. Further, you must know the weight of the load that will be attached to the crane, including the rigging and all hardware that will be used to lift the load. Hardware would include shackles and chain falls, for example. As a rule of thumb, avoid lifting a load that is above 75% of the rated load. If the load is above 75%, Contact your supervisor and or mill contact to ensure that any special lift procedures are met. Attaching the load. Important factors for attaching the load. Use appropriate sling hardware to make sure that you are within the workload limit. Sling angle and center of gravity alignment. The center of gravity is the average location of the weight of an object. The workload limit is the maximum weight that can be lifted by the device. The sling angle is the angle of the sling in relation to the edge of the load and the hook. The sling angle affects the total workload limit of the sling. Moving the load. The appointed person, generally this is the operator, directing the lift shall determine that the load and hoist devices are attached and functioning properly. During the lift, there should be no sudden acceleration or deceleration of the load. In other words, move the crane slow and steady. Cranes shall not be used for side pulls except when specifically authorized. The operator should avoid carrying loads over people. The load shall not be lowered below the point where two wraps of the rope remain on the hoisting drum. No suspended load should ever be left unattended by the crane operator. 
Operator qualifications. The following are general areas that should be considered when designating personnel who will operate an overhead crane. Operators should have a vision of at least 2030 in one eye and 2050 in the other with or without corrective lenses. Be able to distinguish color regardless of position of colors if color differential is required for operation. Be able to hear adequately with or without hearing aids for a specific operation. Have sufficient strength, endurance, agility, coordination, and speed of reaction to meet the demands of the equipment operation. Have normal depth perception, field of vision, reaction time, manual dexterity, coordination, and no tendencies to dizziness or similar characteristics. Operator conduct. The operators and employees shall not engage in any practice that will divert attention while actually engaged in operating the crane. When physically or otherwise unfit, an operator shall not engage in the operation of the equipment. The operator shall be familiar with and follow all signals from appropriate people during a lift. Each operator shall be responsible for those operations under the operator's control. Each operator shall activate the warning device before starting the bridge or trolley and intermittently during the travel of the crane. The operator shall not close the main switch until certain that no worker is on or adjacent to the crane. The operator shall be familiar with the equipment and its proper care. Before any maintenance work on the crane, the crane shall be locked and tagged and the main switch and it shall be in the de-energized position. Overhead Crane Operator Evaluation Once you have completed this video, you will be required to go through a hands-on evaluation for overhead crane operators. Further instruction on the specific type of crane will be provided by your evaluator. The following areas will be evaluated by a qualified person. Operator Behaviors Each operator will be required to go through the pre-use inspection and determine those areas listed below that are in good shape. The operator shall, without a load, perform basic movements of the crane, including hoisting and lowering the main block and the auxiliary block, trawling per the proper hand signals, traveling per proper hand signals, travel to the location of the load, simulate a load, trolley travel, and then simulate and lower that load, and then return the overhead crane back to the proper area. The operator shall repeat those tasks with the load. Once they have passed all the operations without a load, this part will determine if the operator can truly perform the activities with a load on the hook. The evaluator shall also determine if there are other tasks that need to be performed based on the mill requirements or mill specific hazards. Once completed, the evaluator will sign the evaluation along with the operator. 